are Tyrians. We are many races, several professions. We practice the arts of combat as well as healing. We have foes, and we fight them without mercy. And it's time for us to claim back what is ours. It's time for us to claim bacteria from the terror of the Elder Dragons. We can't go on living our lives in fear. We have to fight. We have to make a stand. This is our story. Hello everyone, and welcome to episode number 38 of the Chronicles of Cheerio podcast, Guild Wars 2 podcast, for fans, uh, by fans. Uh, I'm not going to do an intro because this is going to be kind of a weird episode, mostly because we didn't plan it out, so I'm here with, uh, let's kick it old school, the wonder from Down Under, Casey. Hello! Uh, <laughs> If I'm lagging, it's because it's Casey's fault. Yeah, sorry. It, it goes from America to Australia, back to you guys, so. She's a jerk. <laughs> um, yeah, normally Naveen hosts it. And now we have a ton of lag. So. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, thank you, everyone that's come out. Joel says you should move to Canada. I know, um, I should. Yeah, uh, this week will be a little different. We have some discussion stuff we kind of want to talk about. Uh, we want to have some news and uh, kind of just talk about some hot button issues that are going on. Um, but first, for those of you that are in Chronicles of Tyria and know about our new guild activity participation thing, I would like to take a little attendance here roll call for everybody that showed up that's going to participate. So if you want to just type out in the Twitch channel what your in-guild name is or your display name in game so I make sure I'm giving the right person credit, I will go ahead and take that all down. So you guys can do that. You know, those of you that want to be entered, if you don't want to be entered for whatever reason, it's free loot. Uh, look at this. Oh my god. All of these people. J Jal is not here, apparently. <laughs> Tully, Tully gets no entry because he can't have that. Um, sorry, Tully. That was a special gift from Pirate. So. <laughs> uh. Looks like we got some Casey impersonators. Yeah. <laughs> Chrono Warper. All right. I think I just saw you were added recently to the forums. Uh, I think. Uh, nope. Anybody that's here, or if you show up during the show. Uh, and new people show up. Um, I'm not going to remind everybody all throughout the show, so if you guys in the channel can just say, hey, um, you know, if you want, if you're in the guild and you want participation to get that, uh, just memory burn. Sorry, I'm, uh, this is going to be more streamlined going forward. Yeah. Promise. At the moment, I he's just creating lots of editing for me. <laughs> yeah. Don't, just, this is how, it's live, Casey. This is how it <laughs> This is it. It's real, man. It's real. <laughs> Shit is getting real on this episode. <laughs> so uh, while he does that, I'll just explain to people who don't know what's going on. Um, so in our guild, we have uh, uh, lots of events going on, and we have uh, a lot of great things going on, but we uh, are trying to encourage more participation. And one way we're doing that is that every time you attend a guild event, and obviously our podcast is one of them, every time you join a guild event, um, you get given a point. And if you get a certain number of points, you get put in uh, entry into a draw. And each week... Uh, 
<laughs> and each week you will uh, put an entry into a draw and you could win something really fun. So it's encouraging attendance if you are in the guild. If you're not in the gr guild, this is just an unfortunate thing that's going on for you. Um, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> uh, at the end of the month, by the way, not every week. At the end of the month, every sorry. <laughs> at the end of the month. And actually, Lovegood uh, brought something else up and I'm going to encourage this as well. It's it's people that participate to eight of our events get entered in to win the raffle and Lovegood brought this up and like I said I'm going to enforce it uh, there's also going to be another special gift for the person who attends the most in the month if there's a tie we're going to have to figure it out but whoever attends the most events will also win a prize they'll just win a prize unless multiple do it and there's a tie uh, but everybody else it's a raffle random number generation Guild Wars 2 style so, and again, if you don't want to be entered for whatever reason, just let me know and I won't do it. Casey's Legendary, <laughs> it's, it's Soulbound. <laughs> it's also Soulbound, so it wouldn't do anything for you guys. Um, all right, so thank you, everybody, for putting up with that little bit. Uh, we'll try to, I might make a spreadsheet and everybody can just type their names in next time. Mm. Uh, so, anyway... What we're going to be talking about this time, uh, to start it off, it's going to get a little bit, a little bit real, maybe a little bit sad. Good way to start off a podcast, I know. <laughs> we're going to talk about what's going on with COT Podcast, what I attempted to do awfully by myself last Thursday, uh, what the future of the podcast is, what's going on, uh, things like that. So to start... Uh, as most of you can tell, clearly, uh, Naveen's not here. And we know last time she left, she said, you know, I'll be gone for a while. And she was gone for about two weeks, and then she came back. Uh, this time, not going to be that. That's not going to be the case. Uh, she's going to be gone for a while. And when I say a while, just so that nobody gets their hopes up, just probably don't count on her coming back. I could be, you know, delightfully mistaken, but just, you know, let it be a surprise, but don't count on her coming back. Uh, so, sorry to be the bearer of bad news with that, but there you go. Uh, Casey, I'm going to let you explain you being you, what's <laughs> going on. Or whatever you want to explain. Um, okay, so basically I've got a few things going on in my life uh, which is going to kind of affect the podcast a bit. Um, Naveen was kind of like the the super genius that uh, organized the podcast and did all the technical stuff and uh, and now that's going to fall to me and uh, I'm still kind of iffy on it. I'm definitely not as good as she was. Um, and no people in the chat I'm not pregnant um, but it's so basically at the way it is at the moment is that I have to do a lot on the podcast and it's actually fallen at the same time I actually have a lot of uh, real world commitments um, I'm moving house which is really excited it's gonna be my first house um, but it needs a little bit of renovation so there'll be a couple weeks where I will just not be able to do the podcast um, and the second thing is also I've got um, you know some stuff going on personally um, so there might be times where I'm just a little bit uh, uh, hazy or something like that so just bear with us um, we love you guys and we love oh, sorry getting all worked up in the emotion um, I really love you guys and uh, we're really going to work on making this a great show but just be a little bit tolerant for us just realize that there are a lot of things going on at the same time which has made it quite difficult uh, I want to just point out that I will still be here 100% <laughs> committed because that's how I roll Chronicles of Tyria, so um, I will be here to, get, you know, if I can't get Casey to show up, uh, I will, I'll make something happen. <laughs> uh, whether or not it's me doing a solo show, just talking about whatever people want me to talk about, I will do that. Whether I do turn the lights down and put on a fire and have master lag theater and talk in a British accent and all that lovely thing and I'll have a big book that I'll read from and you know keep to tell everybody it'll be story time uh, that could be it too 
Um, we may branch out and look for other hosts. We're just not sure uh, what we're looking for. If we're looking for one at the, at this point in time, uh, and uh, people are going to write jokes for me to tell. I'm give me whatever you have, and I will do what I can for you guys. <laughs> uh, I will. We talked about possibly bringing on. Uh, guest hosts as well. Uh, we've kind of done some shows with guest hosts in the past. Um, uh, but from a strictly numbers standpoint, believe it or not, any of our shows that had guests were usually some of the lowest watched and the lowest rated shows. Uh, so, you know, mm. uh, we're going to do some talking, Casey and I, and figure out what we want to do. And, uh, you know, just keep an ear out and we'll figure out what's going on with that. Uh, um, life-size cutouts of Casey and Naveen. I could try. <laughs> I mean, I always joked about getting a wig and pretending uh, to be Casey. Like, you know, and then come in and then be like, I'll just have to do this. <laughs> Shut you gum. <laughs> For those people oh, at home. Oh, sorry. I was, on, I was on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> just overly Australian cliche and be like, sorry, I had shrimp on the Barbie. I ha I wasn't here. You know, like that. So rude. <laughs> not going to be. What are you going to say? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, we'll, uh, we will gladly take any input from any of our viewers, guildies, whoever. Um, things you'd like to hear us talk about, we have. Uh, there's still a ton of Guild Wars lore left, but it's pretty much what people want to hear and what we want to do. Um, and then, you know, also depends on if we do get guest hosts, what they would want to talk about. Um, you know, we are going to do new stuff every so often, especially as we know other uh, Guild Wars podcasts and Guild Wars websites and things are closing. We want to make sure that, you know, we're still putting out content, new content every week to make us stay relevant, to keep doing things for you guys, uh, and, to, you know, to be some kind of stable thing in this storm, no pun intended because of, you know, everything that's happening in-game, of things changing left and right and people quitting and shows stopping and doing utility belt videos and <laughs> playing other games when you're known for lore. I don't know. Oh, my God, there's a spider. Oh, God. Just like, oh, good thing I don't live in Australia. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so if you guys have things you want to hear us talk about, if you have funny ideas and things we could do, um, we're you know we're still gonna be coming out with stuff, but you know we gladly take your guys's input. So, uh, that's kind of my piece for that. How about you, Casey? Got anything you want to say? We would love to get requests. So if you if there's something you want to hear about or talk about, uh, please feel free to uh, mail us any way any way you can get in contact with us. It's perfectly fine, but we love requests. So definitely encouraging you to request stuff. Okay, uh, Joel in the chat says a COT music video. Like I've mentioned to a few people, I am working on rewriting a very popular pop song to be sung by the members of COT Podcast. Although, with Naveen and Casey disappearing, um, even if I do finish it, I feel like they're still going to say that's the reason why they can't do it. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm not disappearing. I'm just going to go AFK for a little while. Like, I'm still going to be here just every week, every now and then. I like While I'm getting my house sorted out, I'm just not going to be here. Sorry, guys. Real life. It's a bitch. Mm-hmm. It's a beach. That's what I said. A beach. <laughs> uh, I will definitely be coming up. I'm going to write that down just because that's a funny song title. And, um, for the people at home, because Lag loves giving me editing for all the iTunes listeners. Um, they can just deal with it. No, they can listen. No, no. <laughs> they deserve the same rights as everyone else. So... For people at home, he's laughing because someone put in the chat, rewrite, rewrite I'm in Miami by LMFAO to I'm by Miami, which I think is very cool as well. But, yes, anyway. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> but so we're not all doom and gloom. Things are changing. Brace yourself for the change. Winter we had a new. Oh, yes. Well, actually, for you, it's gone for us. Yeah, it's coming. Summer is coming. <laughs> uh, but actually, I do want to point out those of you that watched us live that did see our cool 3D animated logo with the spinny symbols and things like that. That was actually animated by our own Jolinar. Completely uh, surprised me. We didn't ask her to do it, uh, so that was cool. If you guys have, um, you know, any kind of, if you guys have cool editing skills of any kind, whether it be music editing, uh, video, you know, editing, if you're really good with Photoshop, things like that, um, and you have cool things you want, you know, Guild Wars related or even Chronicles of Tyria related, you'd like us to showcase. Let us know, because we can always throw that up live or put it on our website, things like that, to try to get, uh, you know, you guys a little bit of, you know, it'll help make us have cool new things coming out and help give you a little kind of publicity for whatever you do. Um, so, you know, we might be doing some contests, too, of various different natures in the future, uh, so keep an eye out for that. It'll be probably posted on our forums, maybe on our Facebook page. Um probably posted on the Facebook page but the rules will be on the forum so you have to go check out our forums because that's what we do now, drive up forum participation but anyway uh, yes, so there's, there's a new segment that we will be adding to each COT podcast and it's called the question of the week we are going to be asking one question of all of our listeners uh, you know, so it will be right now I guess going forward, it'll be after COT Weekly when we bring that back and actually have a structure going. Uh, it'll be after that. But going forward, we're going to save that time to discuss the best answer and the answers from last week. Uh, right now, we're going to have the question here, and that question is, what do you think ArenaNet can do to fix the guesting problems in the game? And especially if you're on Tarnish Coast, how do you think? Because we have, we all know we have a lot of problems with guesting. Uh, so what's your solution? Send it to us to hosts at chroniclesoftyria.com. And we will, again, this section here will be used to talk about the answer from this week on next week's show. Going forward, the questions can be anywhere in the whole show. So you've got to watch the whole show or listen to the whole show to make sure you get when the question's going to be. Uh, and if you will be listening to it later on uh, YouTube or or iTunes, uh, you've got until the Tuesday before the next show. So today is a Thursday. You've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, midnight Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Daylight Time, I guess. Uh, Tuesday, which would actually be. Wednesday. 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Tuesday, to submit your answers to be in the running to be the winner of Question of the Week. Um, and what you'll be getting, we will be, if you have a website, at least for right now, until we come up with a better prize, right now uh, we'll be doing a shout-out to you on the show to the best answer, why we think it's the best answer. Uh, we also will be, if you have a website or anything like that, we'll be plugging you, linking all your stuff in our description, posting it in our Twitch chat for everybody to see. So, uh, like I said, if we come up with better ideas for prizes going forward, you'll be able to get one of those. But for right now, that's the question. And it doesn't matter if you type us what you think should happen in the Twitch TV channel the only way we're accepting answers is through hosts at chroniclesoftyria.com. So that's our new little piece. Uh, again, you're going to, going forward, have to listen to the whole show because you never know where we're going to throw it in. It could be right in the middle of a lore section. Wait a minute. Question of the week. We're also, as another kind of little fun thing, if you're fun with audio editing and clip editing, if you can come up with a really fun uh question of the week sound bite that we can play right before we say this you know here's the question of the week we'll send you we'll get you a prize of some kind and we'll be more than just a shout out on the show we'll figure that out but just throw that out there um okay so that was that casey's awful quiet <sighs> let me talk <laughs>
being considerate. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, that is our, like I said, we're trying to come up with new, fresh ideas to keep people coming back and drive up the participation, get mail related to the podcast, because, like I said, I think the last time we got a mail related to new topics and questions about things we should talk about was, like, August of last year. Maybe. Before game release. Maybe even earlier than that. Um... So, yeah, there you go. Uh, and Al Cardellina, because your name is very easy to figure out, I'm putting you down on the list for participation. Um, so, uh, all right, next we're going to talk about, you know, just some news and kind of some hot button issues in Guild Wars, maybe drive up a little bit of drama. Why not? Uh, first, we're going to talk about something that I'm still very skeptical about, and that was the, one of the most recent blog posts by ArenaNet all about how guesting is now gone or will be gone forever. Um, now, I don't know about you, Casey, but I just I don't buy it. I don't think that it's going to be that easy. No. No, uh, not. <laughs> I do love the picture. For those of you who don't know, I'm sorry, not it's culling, not guesting, although guesting would be great if that was gone too. I'm sorry, I meant culling. I didn't even uh, pick that up. <laughs> I guess it was right on there with me. Oh boy, I'm off of the ferry. That's alright, I'm get rid of guesting too. That's my answer. <laughs> uh but anyway, if you look at their most recent blog post about see? I'm just driving up drama. That was the whole part. Look at all the people comment. <laughs> this is just tons of interest that we're getting. Um but no. Culling. I love the image that they put up on their website for those of you who don't know what culling is they put up a before and an after image and it's a ridiculous at the amount of things that you just don't see in uh, the top image versus the bottom image mm. now uh, you know they go and they explain what culling is for those of you uh, who don't know and like I said it's basically invisible ninja enemies uh, that just attack you out of nowhere because you can't see them because the server restrictions don't allow you to see them. Mm. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with our Twitch chat. Uh, but yes, the calling the main issue is this is in world versus world only because that's where a lot of the problem is. Not saying that that's not a problem in PVE because we all know that it is, especially if you participated in the Karka event, you know how awful... <laughs> culling was, oh, where you'd get rolled over by a Karka, and you would be like, what? <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get, like, way over there, and then there's, like, a stream, like, a line of just dead players. <laughs> but, yes, for World vs. World, which I don't, I have, to be completely honest, I haven't been in World vs. World in quite a while, mm. so I don't even know, um, <laughs> like, how bad it is in there, because I just haven't been in. But, yeah, I uh, I mean, especially with any of the dragons now that you get the updated rewards, things in ore, you just can't see, like, you go and fight the Claw Jormag, and it's dead. And it's been, you're, you think you're still fighting, and it's been dead for 30 seconds to a minute. People are posting their rares that they got out of the chest in the chat. <sighs> I, I I love what happens when you're like you think you're standing by yourself and then all of a sudden like this massive group forms around you and like everywhere else is like empty, but this is this massive group like 500 people just standing on top of you. Um, but I think that is really a big problem that they need to address, especially in PVE. As for World versus World, I haven't been part of a Zerg for ages, um, but. I can imagine it would be very frustrating and unfortunately ArenaNet has had this history of hyping things up, like hyping it up now like, oh my god, culling is gone, it's completely gone from the game and you're going to go in there and it's going to be there. And it's, you know, and They could have like, I think it would have been better if they said, we're improving it quite a bit and then we'd be pleasantly surprised because there's no culling at all. Mm, yeah. But just to kind of sum up quick, I'm not going to... Uh, we'll post the link in the description to the um, the blog, but I'm sure most of you have seen it because there haven't been much news kind of coming out of ArenaNet recently. But essentially, there's going to be graphic 
options uh, for world versus world, a new set of them. There are three different ways you can have characters be rendered. There's high resolution models, which are basically what you've been seeing. Excuse me, the low resolution fallback models, which are, you know, they kind of use a generic uh, race and armor kind of template for, like, human, Silvarian, Norn all share the same template. And it's just to kind of. Because honestly, in World vs. World, you really don't care what you are fighting, like what they look like, as long as you're just able to fight them. At least in my mind, because it shouldn't matter if they're, you know, uh, a two foot tall Silvari in rainbow colored armor. You, if they're an enemy invader, you just want to kill them. Um, but, and then they also have another one, which is nameplates only, where you actually only see their name which I'm sure would free up a ton of server resources for you because all you're seeing is a floating name moving around. But I don't know how easy that's going to be to target if you're going to visually pick that up. Um, and then the other option is the way the character limits are displayed, which is there's character limit, which controls how many reported characters render with a model and how many are rendered with only nameplates around you. And then character quality controls how many of the characters render with a model use the high resolution model and how many use the low resolution model. So, you know, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, I'm very interested to see, because this, I'm assuming, maybe, I said I don't know anything about, you know, server coding and things like this, that this was a pretty big effort, because I can't imagine if it was this simple that they would have just done it right away. Yeah, yeah. So I'm curious to see what else is going to come out with this new patch in two weeks, because this seems like a probably a pretty significant effort, and I'm assuming it's going to put a lot of strain on the server. Maybe, maybe not. That's the whole point is to remove the strain. Mm. But like as far as bug fixes and PVE stuff, dungeon tweaking, whatever, are we going to see a ton of that, or is this going to be? solely, you know, world versus world stuff. I know we're going to see the progression in world versus world, and we're going to see, you know, the new titles and the new abilities and things like that. Well, they did say that March was going to be focusing on world versus world. So I can imagine for a while we'll probably only see world versus world stuff coming out. So that is that little piece. Next on our list... Flame and Frost, the Raising. Uh, yes, we're going to have, and Tully kind of said it in the chat here, but we are going to also receive new content regarding the living story, and we know we're going to be learning of new heroes, essentially, a Char and a Nor and a hero, who you will be traveling with and things like that. In my, like, the, the text is, is pretty nice, and I like what they wrote. But I don't like that. In the past, we normally got, like, when we'd get an update for the next patch, you know how you had, you had like, text about what it was going on, and then you had, like, a picture and some text, and a picture and some text all the way down. You had, like, you know, like four or five things that you're like, oh, man, that looks really cool. And then it's just like this. It's just a blurb of text with, like, a, a, like a concept art picture of, mm. like, a Norn dude with his nipple hanging out in a mace. <laughs> like, I don't... Like, I want some more stuff to go off of. Yeah, yeah. Um, it very much feels like it's still the starting. It's so slow. It's not starting up yet. Yeah, I uh, I mean, we do know, for those of you who don't know, in Wayfair Foothills, there's a new kind of Norn structure uh, to the north of Doliath Pass Waypoint. So there presu maybe we'll get to go in there in this event. You know, in this content release, it might be for the last one. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure what to expect. We will have that, but honestly, we had the new Living Story stuff for this month. It's kind of, yes, it's cool. Mm -hmm. We have, um, what? I don't, I'm sorry. Ugh. My wife Facebook messaging me during the show, throwing me off. Uh, but yes, we um, wow, totally just pff, asking me about Girl Scout, Girl Scout cookies. Why would you t like message me about that right now? <laughs> uh, but yes, actually, Brahms in the chat uh, 
thank you for bringing that up. Um, yes, there's not... I don't feel like there was any content. Mm. Like, okay, yes, the concept of the Dredge and the Flame Legion working together, awesome concept. I love it. I love seeing uh, Flame Legion shamans in Sorrow's Embrace mm. armor, which I thought was awesome, which I didn't notice originally when they started popping out of the portals. The little Dredge APCs popping up out of the ground and the, the Flame Legion jumping out of it and the Dredge coming through Flame Legion portals, awesome conceptually. But I feel like I enjoyed more talking to the refugee coordinators in Holbrack and Black Citadel and when they were alluding as to what was happening. Like I enjoyed that more with no actual content than I do of just going and running and massacring a bunch of low-level you know, NPCs mm. and then like, all right, this event will recycle in 10 minutes. Like... And then there's the kind of the refugee camp in Lion's Arch, which is probably the coolest thing, um, because you know you're going the consortium, which we all know is well, at least what I believe anyway, and I feel I'm not alone that they're kind of sketchy. They're like the anti-Black uh, Lion Trading Company, and you know they you basically are bringing I don't know what you call them, like relics or some sort of item from either Wayfair Foothills or Diesa Plateau that spawn randomly every day in random locations to some NPCs there. We've got four out of a possible six, but once we get those other two, you've exhausted all of the content mm. for this patch. You can actually count the content on the hands. Like, so far, how many weeks have they been dragging it out? And what we got was random dynamic events in two areas. Um, interesting conversation and um, plot set. It's not actually plot. It's set up plot set up in um, major towns, and then a room covered uh, relics. Oh, sorry, dirt covered uh, relics and snow covered relics, and the path where you have to the um, titles that you know you have to go and help people, and you get the titles for helping people. Mhm. Mm Oh, hang on, yeah. hang on, I got one more. That new thing in Wayfair of Foothills that they have explained nothing about that appeared so magically out of nowhere and no one, no one, not even a guy posted at the front door to say, move along. Five things. How many weeks has it been since it started? Well, it's been two full months. And when we think of two full months. So they haven't even got new, one new content for each week. Um, and when you think about uh, Halloween, which in my mind was the most perfect hol holiday to date, it was fantastic. I think over three days or something like that, they started, or a, a, every week or something like that, they released bootloads of content, like absolute tons and tons of content, tons of things to do, jumping puzzles, new areas, unlockable um, items, you're overflowing with stuff and I'm just sorry, I'm just really irritated that five things to do over two months are in it. Stop dragging your heels. Yeah, and I just made you enemies. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to remember Halloween was four acts. Mm. You had the new events. You had, like, um, the the scavenger hunt. Mm. You had the haunted doors popping up. And that was the first, like, week-ish. Yep. Yep. And you also had... Then you had um, the clock tower. You had the Mad King realm. You had the two new versions of PvP stuff. Uh, and, and then, you know, you had the ridiculous, awesome drop rates of exotics mm. in, the like, the dungeon, the labyrinth. Then you had, um, you know, he busted out of the statue, and then you could go down. And I really should have ran that dungeon a lot more because you got a ton of awesome rewards out of that. And then, you know, you had like, and then it kind of sucked at the end. It was like, and you show up to Lion's Arch, and you get a hat. But don't forget the bootloads of lore. Like there was so much. Like if. What I loved about that was, if you didn't like lore, you could just skip through everything and get the items. If you love lore, which I loved, I like screenshotted everything and I reread them, and I absolutely love learning about um, Mad King Thorn. I thought that was out fantastic. Where I feel like the living story stuff, it's you know, it's kind of edging towards something perhaps interesting regarding South Sun Cove, the flame and dredge, a bit coming together. But apart from that. Nothing, really. So, um, very, very 
frustrated as a gamer feeling that it's been dragged on and hyped up so much for such little content. Now, yeah, I mean, I don't want to go... I mean, I, we bashed on it quite a bit, but I do want to point out um, that I do like the way, to an extent, that it's been implemented. I like that it's not all, like, gated, like, here you go, mm. here's some stuff, go do it. I like the mystery of it, that you have to go find things, and that they're not really kind of leading your hand. Yep. But that being said, I want something. Like, I want more than what we've got. And, you know, maybe, and again, I, I feel like I'm at, you know, acting a little bit entitled because this is free. I can't complain about that. Yeah, that's that. true. That is very true. But, I mean, again, and a lot of people are comparing it to Halloween and the Lost Shores event, which was like a weekend, and we got a whole new zone. Mm. Mm. Like a whole new map in a weekend and a ton of lag and possibly precursors. You know, but we've got four months worth of content, and I feel like if it's gonna be like some people are saying in the chat towards the end, like a ton of content in like the you know part three and part four, like couldn't we have taken a little bit and put mm -hmm. it in part one and a little bit and put it in part two so it doesn't feel like? Are you saying that there's actually like I didn't realize, but is there actually already been two parts? Yes. The Gathering, the Prelude, and the Gathering. Storm. My and now it's the Raising. God. My really? God. It was Flame and, <laughs> Flame and Frost, the Prelude. Flame and Frost, the Gathering, Storm, which was the past patch in February. Yeah. Flame and Frost, the Raising is March, and then there's going to be another one in April. Do you not pay attention to our show? I do when we're When we're having the show? I didn't realize it was parts. I just thought there were updates. I thought we were still in part one or the Prelude. <sighs> so you, would you care to take would you care to recount everything you just said and start over with your opinion no because my opinion would be much more angrier the fact that we're two parts in and I can count the content on my hand <sighs> but no it, one thing is that it does seem like we're complaining a lot but we love Guild Wars and, um, and we understand that it's been done for free and stuff like that but it's more account of um, it's not the fact that we think that we deserve more but it could be done a lot better if arena net instead of instead of hyping this up so much for two months instead just release this content all at once together um f like and make it over a three week period like if you just do that that would be ten times better and wouldn't make me so freaking grouchy and angry but um like i run around like some of the content is just void now like the signs for example Jalinar says smack the signs um I just run past the signs like I don't need them anymore I got my title that's it like I don't care about yep. refugees anymore <laughs> yeah like I said it I don't know I like that they're adding new content and I love that it's free mm. and I do like the scavenger hunt feel but I feel like we could do with more of that. And I feel like we could do with more of that in the game as a whole. Like, if they implemented... And yes, I'm kind of stealing some of this information from, like, something that Wooden Potato said. But I've all... I agree with it. If there were more of these, like... Let's call them traditional quests, even though they're not. But these kind of, like, oh, hey, can you go get... You know, I... You know, you talk to the NPC in Lion's Arch... And they say, I lost my toy wooden soldier when we were coming. And then you go find it. Mm. And, it, you know, it could be anywhere. Mm. That kind of content in a couple more zones here and there dispersed to give us something more to do, I feel, you know, don't necessarily even replace the hearts because keep them there. That's fine. Mm. It's a pretty big concept in the game and whatever. But, like, throw in a little bit more to give us more to search around for. Yes, and actually Joel brings up a good point, and I would... I was meaning to talk about this uh, on previous shows but yeah there actually is like a quest like that in Iron Marches with I believe he's a char that has like a motorcycle essentially and if you help him he gives you a town clothes bandana and you can't get that any other place <laughs> in the game and like it's you don't have to do it but it's just it's a thing you can do 
and it's you know like things like that like even if there was more things like that guy mm. where there's like in one zone and like three quarters of the players could maybe not even know about it and never find it yeah yeah you know what i mean but it's like yeah it's like a biker bandana and it's awesome like i went out and i i found out about it from some other people and i went and did it like that is such a cool piece of content if that was like if there was only one of those in every zone uh that would be awesome mm. so i think that that should be more of that but anyway that was kind of a rant uh i think we should probably move on <laughs> otherwise we're not going to get through half the stuff we want to talk about the next things are just going to be some more ranting um <laughs> what i put down is gem store dot 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 garbage aka 31 days of sales of things that nobody actually cares about. Oh, not to mention uh, the writing. Oh, no. Some that's people like the, the next outfit. piece. <laughs> we'll wait. All right, all right. I'll keep that in. In. <laughs> in in the image that they put up for 31 days of sales were Black Lion Keys, Fine Transmutation Stones, Mystic Forge Stones. Okay? Three things that people would actually want to buy. I believe Mystic Forge Stones went on sale already. But, like, oh, man, you can get 50 gems off a pair of boxing gloves. 50 gems. Like, barely a percentage of anything off on, like, things that nobody cares about. Put the armor skins on sale for, like, 50% off. Put, you know, I mean, they did put on the hair kits, the hair styling kits, yesterday, I think. So that was a good one. Uh, but, like, I mean put more of the good content that people want. I mean, boxing gloves, okay, percentage off was cool. They're one of the better um, costume brawl items. You know, they have decent stuff. But, like, I mean, don't put... What did they put on? Like, karma boosters, I think, were on. Or experience boosters or kill streak boosters, like, a couple weeks ago or a week ago. Kill streak boosters? Really? Do people use them anymore? Do people use them ever? <laughs> if you don't kill an enemy within 30 seconds, it's gone. Yeah, that is ridiculous. And, like, where you can get an experience booster and get more experience per day, you know, per for an hour, or you can take five experience boosters, put them with a few other things in the Mystic Forge, make a boosted, ex uh, you know, a master experience booster or whatever, and it gives you, like, plus 100% experience for two hours. Why would you want... I mean, yes, those stack. But whenever are you in a situation where you're PvEing and questing around, that you can guarantee you're going to be able to kill something every 30 seconds. If you're map completion or running around, you're going to be stopping and killing you know, every little deer that you run across so you can get your kills. Uh, yeah, mini pets on sale would be a good one. Bring bank tabs and character slots and things, put those back on sale. Things that people will actually buy. And yes, I realize that we're only 14 days into a 31-day month. So there is still time. But, like, give us something decent in the beginning so we're not just sitting here. Because the majority of us are going, the 31st is probably going to be Black Lion Key Day. Mm. Because it's the last day of the month. So, please, give us something. Mm. Anyway. Slash rant. For that. <laughs> uh, and Next then on to the thing last. Is oh, my you... rant. <laughs> uh, we're going to be uh. talking about. Um, uh, was it the riding gear? And uh, I, when I saw this on sale, it was, it was very odd to me because. <sighs> okay, let's start with number one. It's riding gear. There's no mounts in the game. What? Are they riding? I've never seen anyone ride anything except for a golem. And you don't need to and, ride golems in, in with and, riding gear. And the broom. And riding broom. Riding broom. Okay. Anyway, um <laughs> I just like my mind cannot take it because I don't like the broom, the riding broom. I think it was a a cheap cash out. It's meant to be for Halloween. It is a Halloween item. In the Guild Wars 
universe when we're talking about canon law is there such thing as a writing like does Queen Jenna like when she's trying to get her branded palace quicker does she just hop on the writing room and go Ooh, like that on the writing room um so if that is the only writable thing why are you releasing writing gear is it such a commercial thing in the Guild Wars universe that there is actually commemorative gear for writing brooms ah but um so that really irritates me for one because it is not law friendly like why are they releasing that stuff second is it looks like npc clothing it is npc clothing i don't think half the npcs would wear that clothes unless they were beggars so i'm very irritated especially how expensive they are and i know some people like it and that is a good skin but i think you're in the minority like i'm just saying it is it is a what would you call it like a just something that you would get and you would be like yeah it's cool but you wouldn't really love it <sighs> arena net why <sighs> onto my I... what the fuck list all right i'm done with the uh, <laughs> explicit tag on this <laughs> podcast <laughs> My my favorite though is what everybody in the chat here came up with. We've got ride a centaur, a dragon, <laughs> ride the lightning. Uh, you know, we have Aaron wrote ride downed people. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, it all in all, um, no. Ultimately, people buy what they want to buy, and I, we have we do. I got a list. From uh, I think is it Jalinar posted a list of um, you know all the things that have gone on sale and you know people are right you don't really know what people are gonna buy mm. but I feel like a lot of the stuff that's been on sale from like in the gem store from launch I can't be certain but I feel things like the sailors beanie which was on sale for the Lost Shores event or like the aviator cap or, or the top hat or things like that, I would figure, aside from new players, most people would already have that if they really wanted it. I don't know if taking, uh, like, 100 gems off or 50 gems off is really going to generate a ton of interest for people. Maybe I'm wrong. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it does seem like some of the more... The items that people would, you know, like the more, I guess, the hot items, like the self-style hair kit and things like that, they put on sale for a little bit more off than they did for something like the pirate captain outfit, mm -hmm. which I think was like 50 gems off. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. That's that. Uh, next is guesting. Um, I kind of wish that guesting was in the game at the beginning of the game like we had originally been told because I feel like all of the kind of issues that guesting has brought on now would be sorted out by this point. Mm. Or maybe they wouldn't have because once they updated the reward system for all the chests, guesting would have had a whole new purpose. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's an issue that's really bothered a lot of people, especially in our guild, and I see it every time I go to an event in on Tarnished Coast, you can see that people are upset about the fact that they've been pushed into overflows when an event goes on, especially when you are the person of the server. And I think it's a legitimate concern, um, but... It is one of those things I think it is very difficult to solve and expecting ArenaNet to like have predicted this is a little bit uh, difficult for them and uh, and it's not something that can be easily fixed because you don't want to punish people from playing with their friends at the same time you want to encourage people to play on their servers. It does kind of go and I mean it doesn't uh, you know it does per se kind of get that whole arena net want me to not have you be like, oh, other players, mm. I don't want to be there. Even though you're technically not seeing those other players just <laughs> getting kicked to an overflow and they're not there, yeah. you know that they're there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's 
it's an issue and it does you know it does hurt the home server and on lower tier servers i'm sure it's not an issue mm. from what i've heard from people that have guessed it to low tier servers or not high pop servers um that like you go fight the dragon and there's mechanics involved like dodging and things like that whereas on our server you just show up and auto attack and the dragon's dead in yeah. two minutes as, as long as you like you just hit one and pray you see a number like always ranged you know always hitting one that sort of thing it's just it is i think that arena net has to realize that it is an issue in the game mm. um especially I on mean, tc tarnished coast I well say. i mean it, it's not necessarily. I'm sure there might be other servers that also have other high population servers. I could be wrong. I don't know. There was. I've um, never guessed it. There was a Reddit thread that named Tarnished Coast. I have to give my uh, this. Th I got this from a guild member, but named Tarnished Coast as the PVE server to go to if you want to complete events quicker. And so that is why Tarnished Coast has had such a big problem because the whole Guild Wars community has identified Tarnished Coast as the one to go to. Well, there you go. That's not helping. Uh, you know, I mean, we are a helpful server. I know I see a lot of people helping. Whereas, I mean, there's trolling everywhere you go. Mm. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of people that are legitimately, you know, helping people. But I feel like your best bet to have like a non overflow fun time is to not go into any server that has to deal with any world event because mm. Yes, Tarnish Coast needs to go back to being the role play server like it mm. used to be. Because honestly, outside of Divinity's Reach, I haven't seen much in the way of role playing anywhere not lately, in the world. No. I when I when because... I first came on, saw so everywhere I went. Now yep. it's very rare, especially in the um, map chat, map, not map, world event areas, because people come on and they're like a big concern people have is how rude some of the other cat players are when they come on. They do map chat and they say stupid things and, you know, being a TC player from, you know, the get-go, everyone's been so lovely and then they come, people from other servers come on and you can tell the difference. Uh, one of our members, Brom, and our viewer here in the chat posted, apparently, the unofficial leveling server, the unofficial OR server, and the unofficial RP server are all listed as Tarnished Coast. Hey. Uh, so, yeah, we are listed as the unofficial X server, basically. Mm. Everybody, and I mean, we're not that bad at world versus world either we're always we're pretty much in tier three tier four depending um and we do fairly well but yeah i mean uh it's just it's you know i mean that's, it's i don't want to make this into a total rant fest but it's kind of gonna be that and i'm sorry it it was depressing at the beginning <laughs> happy in the middle and now it's just sad <laughs> So if you're new and you're just watching the show, don't take this as uh, don't take this as what our shows are always no. like. Normally we do lore uh, as well. <laughs> yes, normally we do lore, uh, but uh, I do um, want to. The next thing, and again, this could cause more <laughs> ranting. Not so much ranting, but uh, I like to kind of spark a discussion. Is guild missions. Mm. Um, and, and specifically in this one, because the only one I can actively talk on currently is Guild Bounties, because that's the only one I've done, the only one our guild has done. But uh, I feel ArenaNet, when they launched this, they were a little misleading. <laughs> and I feel really bad for small guilds that I don't think will have any way of participating in these. Mm. Now, I don't want to talk about the mechanics of how a guild bounty works and and everything so that you guys can experience that for yourself or, or you know watch YouTube videos or read about it on uh, the wiki and things like that but essentially what's the biggest thing is the cost the influ everybody and myself included if you look back at our Facebook page when I thought guild bounties were released on you know Tuesday with the patch I just assumed we were gonna be able to do one Tuesday night because they said they will be available right at the beginning Little did they tell you that you needed to have Art of War level 5 unlocked, which thankfully we did at this point, 
Um, but then you needed to have 30,000 influence ready to go, and then you do it, and then they say, oh yeah, it also takes a week to, to you know, to research. So, or no, I'm sorry, it was three days, I believe. Three days, not a week. <laughs> so again, not really available right away. Mm. If you're a small guild, there's no way you're able to, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say there's no way, but... You know, having 30,000 influence kicking around is probably going to be a little bit difficult for you. Um, and then you got to have a three, wait three days, and then you get to do it. And you find out that there's 15 NPCs from zones from Kessex Hills all the way to South Sun Cove, Frost Gorge Sound, level 80 zones. Uh, so if you have a small guild and you have, you know, let's say you're a new guild even, fledgling, but you have the influence, say, but you don't have people that haven't explored the map because if you weren't in the game when Lost Shores came out and you don't really do dungeons, you have no reason to go to South Sun Cove, Frost Gorge Sound, or Fireheart Rise. Iron Marches too, I think. None, like A lot of those zones you don't have to go to for your personal story. Regardless of what choices you make, you don't go there. So, uh, you know, like those are places that are high level that you probably don't have explored, therefore you don't have any waypoints in, you're not familiar with, and all of a sudden you're like, oh yay, we finally got our guild bounty, let's just start off with a tier 1, which then again is another 200 influence and 12 hours of waiting. You activate it, and then you get two NPCs out of a possible 15 that could be in any of these zones, and it happened to us. Uh, we, um, we had uh, a member who joined that was going to do it with us and the two NPCs that activated were both 70 to 80 zones that they didn't have and they didn't have a 70 to 80 character and they just couldn't come and that I mean like thankfully we have a, a large group of people that have been playing from the beginning and could go but what if you're a new guild who just saved up 32,000 influence to do this or 32,000 or 30,200 influence and a week and 12 hours or three days and 12 hours and then it's in zones you can't get to. It's like, sorry, deal with it. Uh, I have to disagree with you on this I, um, bit because uh, I find that it is end game content. Like my thought about this is guild missions is end game content, content, and it is meant to foster community in a guild. Um, who have done everything and are looking for something to do and uh, I think that this is really good this is really well implemented for end game content because it is difficult and it is challenging and it is something that you have to uh, initiate getting lots of people together and putting them on this thing and coordinating it and working together is a difficult thing and if ArenaNet, if ArenaNet changed it so that everyone would be able to do it and every single guild would be able to do it, you could make the argument: Why can't you do guild bounties by yourself? Why can't you kill a girl, um, a uh, a person as, as a single person? And then you could make arguments like: Why can't you do a dungeon by yourself and stuff like that? It is meant to be coordinated play that you're meant to work hard and um and it is meant to be for bigger guilds um, who have worked hard and achieved all that and yes yeah, some guilds are you know have already got all the influence already got lots of members but they did start at something little at one point and then they worked their way up and this is the reward that they reap for being a big guild um, so I I think yes it is sucky like they should have given more information regarding what you would need to get um, but I think that it is definitely end game content and it is not a bad thing that it is difficult and hard well okay I mean that's your opinion and you're entitled to it oh boy but I would <laughs> I would like to to read a few snippets from arena nets blog post our team's primary goal was to create a solid foundation to support PvE guild play. Mm -hmm. Nowhere does it say endgame. Your PvE guild, you, this is what it's for. Create a future that provided guild members with fun things to do together now and could be expanded to support new styles of content in the future. To do that, we've created a system with three key features 
Guild Missions, Guild Merits, and Expanded Unlock. Guild Missions are a new, unlockable type that you can earn through Guild Tech Tree. These missions are all aimed at group-coordinated play, so kicking off a mission without anyone around wouldn't be advisable. But what if I have a super small guild, you might say? Not to worry, all these missions take place in the persistent world, which gives you the ability to rally people from surrounding countryside and maybe make new friends in the process. But they don't, um, they don't say, they say you should get people to help you. They don't say that it should be for, you know, you're totally fine as a small guild. It, it is group play. And you're right, it doesn't say end game, but I think that is what they were kind of going for. Again, if you were to read, and I won't because there's a ton, and there's a, last I checked was a 40 page complaint thread on guild missions currently. It's probably twice as long at this point um, about the problems with guild missions and specifically guild bounties because, again, that's the one that most people have done at this point. Um, but it just... I feel like if it was, as you're saying, end game content, things like that, which it never did, and there was even a whole thing about arena net possibly encouraging smaller guilds to join larger guilds to like group them together and come together under one larger guild in an attempt to be able to do them which i don't think should have ever been said because they got a lot of flack for that um and it's it's definitely a great thing for a guild that can support it it's good for bringing people together it's driven up our participation in all of our events so i can't rag on it at all because it does for that anyway because it has done a great job at team building which is awesome but I just feel bad for the small guilds that can't physically can't get enough people to do it I mean like we were doing it one way where we were tracking all the NPCs if you do that that's 15 people at minimum you need if you break off into teams you know, you're going to need probably around 10 people, maybe 8 people, a team of 4 and 4 to go after people. If you want to do, I mean, maybe for smaller guilds, I mean, people are saying maybe you have the time limit or the difficulty of the NPCs or the number of NPCs scale with the, the size of the guild. But what if you have a 130-man guild and only 25 people play? You know, what do you do with that? Do you go with the number of guild people online? number of people representing, you know what I mean? Like, I don't... There's a lot of things. I feel like this needs to be looked at because, I mean, guild bounties are fun, and the rewards are very good. So I will say that. So it's not bad, and the merits are good. But past... And another thing, but I'll get to that later. Um, I've seen people complaining that it's only for small guilds because if your guild is too large, that it's not even fun because there's no challenge you kill the NPC in two seconds and it's basically like doing a world event where if you don't get in and get your hit in quick enough your whole guild will down the NPC and you don't get any credit for it which I feel is poor planning on the large guilds you know side anyway but then you have the small guilds that are saying I really was looking forward to this this was fun new content I've beaten the game you know but I can't because we don't have a big enough guild to do it and that's sad uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the next thing I just kind of want to talk about, and we're kind of going to wrap it up after this, so we don't have a ton more to talk about, is I want to talk about guild merits, which are the currency, yet another currency, probably the ninth currency you get in guild wars, because we have a million gold, gems, karma, laurels, commendations, guild and dungeon tokens, merits influence, glory. They love currency. So, merits are used to unlock future guild missions, which is awesome because that means you have to do guild missions to unlock the other ones. But once you've unlocked all those types, you don't the only thing you can use merits for is buying cool new upgrades that you couldn't get like normally you had like plus to influence or karma. Now you can get like a banner that does a plus gold to kill plus karma plus speed boost a bunch of stuff um all in one banner but like for the amount of difficulty it takes to earn merits and the cost i feel like some of these rewards are poor like i oh, let me look it up because i want to be accurate on this the new 
thing. Well, you can go ahead and I'm, talk about. I'm pretty sure that it's something that they can expand and work on and add new rewards is not a big problem in the sense of, uh, you know, how how it would be implemented. Adding new rewards is not a big issue, I don't think. No, I don't disagree with that statement. No, you're you're right. I'm. <laughs> I, I just let me see if I can pull one of these up. One of the rewards I got for doing the guild event was like you turn into a banner. Like yes, you can turn into a guild banner. Why don't Why don't you just put down the banner instead of turning into it? Because that's just. Does that mean you it's... don't get the reward, but people around you do? <laughs> no, it's just like a transformation tonic, like the one that turns you into a tree. It turns you into a banner. But people can get magic find off you, right? I don't think so. Maybe what? they can. That's weird. Like, I mean, this is the one I was talking about. This is the Guild Heroes banner. Five merits and a thousand influence. Plus 10% karma, 15% magic find, 10% experience from kills, 10% gold from kills, 10% increased movement speed, and 15% gathering chance to any ally who touches it within 30 minutes. That's pretty cool. Okay. That's pretty good. But some of these, I feel, are really decent rewards, but I feel like they should be extended because... Let's see. Oh, I was right on the page. There you go. Reduced 15% reduced repair costs for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That's 20 merits, which is pretty much all the merits you get from doing a guild bounty in a week mm -hmm. and 2,000 influence for 15% reduced repair costs for 24 hours. Mm. Change it you to just blew your a week, a week or something like that. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. That one actually, those are pretty decent. It's just gold from kills for 24 hours. Okay. Uh, where's the other one here? Oh, must be at the top. Here you go. Fifteen percent reduced waypoint costs for 24 hours. Again, 20 merits, 2,000 influence. For a week? Mm. That's huge. Mm. But you're wasting a week's worth of guild mission merits for a day's worth of reduced... Like, what if you pick it and you're like, let's do it, and you have, like, five guildies come on the whole weekend? Not saying that would happen, but, like... Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, no, I do love guild missions. I just feel for the small guild that can't do it, because they are fun. They're a great time. We all have a good time doing them. And, uh, you know, it's, it builds, uh, you know, it builds the team. It's, it's all good. You can actually get ascended uh, accessories from the rewards you get. So you're not just don't, you don't just get a chance at a precursor or a rare exotic. You could get an ascended accessory, so an ascended, like, earring piece could come out of that chest that you get for doing a guild mission. Mm. So, I mean, that's awesome. <sighs> yeah. So, I don't know. It was a very ranty COT podcast. Yes. But it felt good and, uh, you know, to get that out there and get our opinions out. <laughs> and like I said, I mean, we're trying to come up with new, fresh things, so this was just kind of an interim while we think that stuff up. Uh, so, again, like I said back at the beginning, if you guys have things you'd like to hear us talk about, suggestions, uh, don't forget to answer our question of the week. Um, send us an email, hosts at chroniclesoteria.com. Uh, if you have any cool art Guild Wars related or COT related you'd like to do, music, question of the week clip, whatever you want to do, uh, please send it to us, email us, talk to us, give us some interaction, and don't be like some of our members who just are like, this is me interacting with you. Send. <laughs> That's great, and we do love that, but, you know, actual physical thing uh, would be good. And Tully, because you've been commenting a lot, I'll reread Question of the Week again at this point. Uh, yes, like Lovegood said in the chat, what do you think ArenaNet can do to fix the guesting problems? And if you're on Tarnished Coast, specifically apply that to Tarnished Coast as well. Mm, yeah. uh, best answer, I mean, it's a discussion question, so it's opinion-based. It's Casey and I's opinion. Uh, what 
do you think whatever we deem the best answer will get a shout out on next week's show um but like i said if we come up with a better idea for a better reward uh you'll get that Yay. <laughs> so hang around and see what we come up with <laughs> um so I think, unless you have things you want to say, I'm ready to wrap it up. I have something I want to say since you forgot about the shout-outs at the start. Or you just didn't have a shout-out and you decided to ignore me. But um, yeah. I have my shout-outs this week. Uh, oh, I just... I, ha- I have to say, I, I was crafting my... Oh, no! I think we lost you. There we go. Um, I was crafting my um, crate kin. And... Uh, someone messaged me about like oh I really love your show it's really good and you're very nice and all that sort of stuff and in all the haze of ha- my Craigkin, I totally forgot to message her back so if you're watching this show and you're like oh that Casey is such a beach um, and you know like I'm really really sorry I remembered afterwards and I scrolled all the way back up my um, my uh, text box to try and find your name but uh, I couldn't find it so I'm really really sorry about that ah no (laughs) so um oh gosh sorry to all the people with the technical difficulties I was trying to find a a screenshot of the name because I remembered I had one but yes I'm very sorry to that person for forgetting to reply to you but I really appreciate it and the second shout out was um, just before the show when I was getting things set up, uh, Jalana and Jolana, which are two guild members, came and found me out in Wayfarer, um, Wayfarer Foothills. And they, I have this thing, I absolutely hate Kaka. Like, they're the most disgusting things. The way they crawl around is just wrong. Um, and so when the new elementals had the same, like, animations as the kaka with the feet and the tail um it really grossed me out so they came and found me and they element they summoned their two elementals and then they had the element um uh air elemental minis and then they turned to elementals and this was what happened i became completely surrounded by air elemental kakas and it was so gross and like the way they <laughs> walk and the way they go back, it was just really, really gross. But it did make me laugh. So thank you guys. It really did make me laugh. That took a lot of planning and effort on your part. And I'm not going to hug you while you're in that form. I will hug you while you're in human form, but no, not in kaka form. So yes, thank you very much. That was very funny and I really appreciated it. Uh, and actually, now that you mentioned it, I have a shout out to a team and not just any team, a team of five of the best guild members in my mind who teamed up against all odds versus a team B, because they're not as good as team A, with double the members. And what happened? Team A showed up, beat their NPC, and took out three quarters of the health of the third NPC before team B could even show up in the most recent guild mission. And this shout out goes to Jal. Reaper, Brom, Beltane, and I'm not going to shout out to myself because that's lame, but I was on that team, and we are awesome. So hear that, Team B? We're coming for you. <laughs> she just got real. <laughs> um, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anyway, that was a little little fun. Yeah. Um, See, we ended on a happy but yeah. note. <laughs> yes. So thank you again, everyone, who came out and stuck with this, whatever you want to call this show. <laughs> uh, and again, if you want to get a hold of us, host to chroniclesoteria.com. Check out our forums at cotforums.com. We are posting a lot of stuff on there. Uh, a lot of good questions, builds, uh, some polls. Uh, I excuse me, I know some of the RP stuff actually started back up again, people posting their own kind of personal stories uh, because I don't know what's going on with the writers on the main site, because I I honestly just have no idea (laughs) Um, so please check out our forums, Uh, sign up for the forums, if you're a guild member and you haven't you should Um, yeah, so come out and play with us in game uh, we're out every Saturday and Tuesday doing guild bounties, so if you'd like to join up with one, if you haven't 
done one or you're in a small guild and you kind of want to see what that's like, um, you can kind of come along with us uh, and you'll get, you know, your regular personal event rewards that you normally get for doing an event. And you can just kind of feel it out and see, like, oh, this is kind of dumb. I'm kind of glad my guild can't do it because it's not that great. And there you go. No. We'll be it's your guild <laughs> Uh But yeah, so uh, hit us up in-game if you have charged lodestones that you're just sitting and taking up dust in your bank. Send them to this guy right here. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to use the podcast to try to extort mats from people. Uh, no, I'm not. I just said I'm not. What? Therefore, you, you already did that. You already said send me charge loan so you're already using the podcast to extort. But that's fine because I got a lot of stuff for my legendary from the podcast. So thank you guys. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, thank you again, everyone, everybody in the Twitch channel. Um, we didn't look at iTunes if anybody commented, but if you are listening to us on iTunes, awesome. Uh, thank you for letting you know making Casey's editing all this worth it. Yay. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm ready to close this out. But Casey, one last question before we go: Do you have Girl Scouts in Australia, and therefore Girl Scout cookies? We have something different. Like, I'm pretty sure we have Girl Scouts, but we have something else. I think it might be... Oh, let me check. Uh... Yes, we have Girl Guides, but they're called um, Brownies. And it's... Okay. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, for girls aged 7 to 10 years old. Is that around the same thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, brownies are base brownies are Girl Scouts, but they're before they're Girl Scouts. Uh, you know, yeah. it's like like the Cub Scout is before a Boy Scout. Uh yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Girl Scout. Okay. We have I just was curious. There's in Canada and Australia and other places, but mostly Canada and Australia. And prior to two thousand twelve the promise was I promise I will do my best to my duty to God to serve the Queen and country, to help other people and keep the guide law. Yay <laughs> I was actually in that for a little while. Oh, thank you, Joel, for all of the uh Pathfinders. That's right, my sister was a Pathfinder before she stopped being uh, a Girl Scout. But yes, okay, just curious, because Claire was like, when she asked me, apparently, if for those of you who want to listen to this after show babble here, <laughs> uh, Girl Scout cookies, Her one of her co-workers is selling them, and she wanted to know if I wanted any, and then she's like, do they even have those in Australia? <laughs> so. I've never seen them sell cookies at doors, though. Oh, no? No. And when I was there, we did really weird stuff like uh, sewing and learning how to make bush damper and uh, that sort of stuff. I'm sorry, what? Okay, I said something weird, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, take a guess at which one was the weird one. Bush damper? <laughs> yeah. Care to elaborate? It's, um, it's a type of food. I think it was like developed by the Aboriginals. Um, and it's, uh, it's basically this kind of Brady sort of thing that's, uh, how would you say, you cook it in the bush? That is another thing. Um, uh, and I can't remember because it was so long ago, but it's a special way. Stop trying to keep, just don't laugh, lag, don't laugh. And, um, it's like, a, it's a type of bread that was established by the bush guys you know, in the outback and stuff like that. Um, and, yeah. It's one of the things kids learn to do in Australia. <laughs> Lovegood says, bite that lip. <laughs> so thanks again, everyone, um, uh, for coming out and for, I guess, we'll just wrap it up. For Chronicles of Tyria episode, uh, or Chronicles of Tyria podcast, I should say. Uh, most of you should be drunk if you're playing the drinking game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for Chronicles of Tyria podcast, uh, episode number 38, I am Lagwin. And I'm Casey. And we will see you next time. Bye.